when I'm working on something in my life, I used to usually study it out a little bit. Like, I've been really thinking about acceptance, the word acceptance. And I, so I studied out a little bit of it. And I really want to accept the people that I love. I want to give unconditional acceptance. But I keep finding that I get my, my, my personal preferences on how they do things and how they treat me. And I keep finding those things get in my way. Well, this I'm going to give you some thoughts that I came up with about uh, acceptance. Uh, empathy is an important part of acceptance. Empathy toward others or the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes can go a long way in truly loving another person. When you can't see eye to eye on certain issues, whether it's big things like marriage or religion or small things, things like what to eat for dinner, it's important to express empathy as it attempts to bridge the divide between the two of you. Empathy also forces you to practice compassion and become a more compassionate person overall. Compassion allows you to connect with another person and try to see things from their perspective. It gives an insight into the behavior of how and why they may react or act in the way that they do. See, I want them to act and react the way I would do. And that that's not given empathy. And so that was a thought that, that really helped me. The next one thought that I had is controlling your reaction. It's often said that you can't control a situation, only the way you react to it. And this is also true for how you approach the people in your life. We are all sensitive, connected beings, and how we think and act can have a big, much bigger influence on others than we might imagine. Our reactions can trigger thoughts and behaviors in others, both in a negative negative and a positive way. For example, if your reaction to someone ignoring you is that of anger without understanding why they may be, may have ignored you, that would immediately cause a negative reaction in the other person. In other words, negativity breeds negativity, especially when the reasons of the situations aren't entirely clear. When coming from a place of calm and giving the other person the benefit of the doubt, you are much more likely to get a calm or positive reaction instead. That made sense to me, that I, my negative reaction toward what they're doing, like ignoring me, might cause them to jump back and be give me another action of being negative and, and reacting to me. So anyway, so I'm thinking about that. Then the last... The last thing is that we have to consider different mindsets and perspectives. Humans are naturally quite selfish due to the fact that we often believe how we think our perspectives and our opinions are correct, while others are wrong. We rarely consider that each and every person is never having the same experience or thought patterns due to life experiences and limited beliefs. We like to think that people closest to us in life think in a similar way, which may be true. However, this is almost never the case, even with couples who have been together for 40 or 50 years. Be mindful of the fact that how you see a problem, situation, or the way someone is reacting to something isn't necessarily how the other person is viewing it. By taking another person's point of view, we broaden our own, and this helps us to understand our actions and consequences as well as others better, which leads to less assumptions and, again, more compassion. So what is compassion? Compassion is loving them. So that means that I really have to decide that I'm going to give in to other people's perspectives. I'm going to allow them to have them. I, I am a very giving person. At least I think I am. And I I grew up doing for others a lot. Sometimes when I'm around certain personalities, I have a tendency to think they're selfish and very self-centered. Now, I've had, in this situation, after reading this and thinking this through, I've decided that maybe they're not as giving and others-oriented as I am, but that doesn't mean that they're selfish and self-centered. I've got to accept the fact that they have a difference of opinion on how much they should give and how much they should do. And I should let them be that way. See, it's really hard. When the Bible says, brethren, let us love one another, do we really do it? Can we really learn how to do it? I think that's what my problem is. I've got to really work at learning how to love other people by accepting them. I hope that as I've shared these th- three thoughts that I had about love and acceptance, that it's, it's got you thinking. Think about that one person that you might ha- be having a little bit of problem with and try to decide how you can empathize with them, control your reactions to them, 
and accept their mindsets and perspectives. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice.